Good evening, Madam President, Mariam Rajavi, and good evening to my dear brothers and sisters in Ashraf Free. My warmest greetings to you all, and especially to the courageous resistance units in Iran. It's a great privilege to speak to you this evening. Hitler's thousand year Reich only lasted 12 years. On that basis, the Iranian regime is well past its sell by date. The 1979 revolution in Iran, which overthrew the despotic rule of the Shah, was quickly hijacked by the Mullahs and their psychotic figurehead, Ayatollah Ruhollah Khomeini. Khomeini appointed himself as God's representative on earth, changing Iranian society overnight and giving birth to what is now known as Islamic fundamentalism. Khomeini's legacy of repression and corruption has been steadfastly maintained ever since. For the past 41 years, the Mullah's revolutionary creed of radicalized Islam in reality boils down to a policy of hatred, hatred of the West and in particular America, a hatred of Sunnis, a visceral hatred of Saudi Arabia and Israel and a hatred of religious minorities of any kind. To achieve their constitutional objective of spreading revolution to create a fundamentalist Shiite caliphate, the clerical regime has vigorously backed Bashar al-Assad's bloody civil war in Syria. It has trained, financed and commanded the brutal Shia militias in Iraq. It has sponsored the Hezbollah terrorists in Lebanon and the Houthi rebels in Yemen. It has bankrolled and inspired the export of proxy wars and terror throughout the Middle East and the wider world. Every country the mullahs have targeted is now a smoking ruin. Founded on hatred, this theocratic fascist dictatorship has wrecked the Iranian economy, plundered the people's wealth, ruined the environment, and turned this once great nation into an international pariah. Deploying their Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps, the IRGC, which is the regime's Gestapo, the mullahs have unleashed a homicidal blitz on their own population, crushing dissent, wantonly murdering and maiming thousands of peaceful protesters. Iran's jails are bursting at the seams with political prisoners, many of them young students, male and female arrested during the most recent nationwide uprising in November 2019. The main targets for arrest, torture and execution are supporters of the principal opposition movement, the People's Mujahideen of Iran, the PMOI MEK, and their families. Over the past four decades, 120,000 of its members and supporters have been executed. Dozens more have been assassinated outside of Iran. The latest wave of arrests and hard prison sentences for PMOI MEK supporters and their families has laid bare the mullah's fear of the people who are now seething with rage at their criminal rulers. Iran has become a dangerous powder keg ready to explode. Last week, the trial began in Belgium of Asadollah Asadi, a diplomat from the Iranian embassy in Vienna. It's the first time in European history that a diplomat has been tried for acts of terrorism. Asadi was filmed handing over 500 grams of high explosives and a detonator to an Iranian couple from Antwerp, ordering them to bomb our great annual gathering at Villepinte near Paris in June 2018. He and his co-conspirators have been in jail for the past two years, awaiting trial. But the question has to be asked, who gave Asadi the orders to bomb 
the NCRI gathering. As foreign minister, Javad Zarif is in charge of Iran's army of ambassadors and diplomatic staff. In June 2018, he was therefore responsible for the orders given to Asadollah Asadi. And this was not the only plot involving his diplomatic staff. Albanian intelligence offers uncovered a plan to detonate a bomb at a Nowruz gathering of MEK PMOI members in Tirana. Two MOIS agents, together with the Iranian ambassador and first secretary, were expelled from the country by the Albanian Prime Minister Edi Rama. But even Zarif could not have given orders to carry out such terror attacks without the consent and approval of Rouhani and the Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei. All of them must now be held to account. All of them must be indicted for acts of terror and tried before the international criminal courts. And all of the mullah's embassies, which they use as bomb factories and launch pads for terror attacks, must be immediately closed. The time has come to pull down the curtain on this murderous regime. After 41 years of tyranny, the Iranian regime's sell-by date has expired. The mullahs and their supreme leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei have earned their place in the trash can of history alongside Hitler, Mao, Stalin, Pol Pot and every other failed tyrant. It's time to say goodbye and good riddance. Thank you very much.